Welcome back to Carolina Cooks. Okay, we decided the steaks are probably about medium to medium rare. The asparagus are up, they're waiting for the romesco sauce. Now I want to show you how to make a compound butter, which is one of the easiest and most flavorful things to do with a steak. And what's left over you can use for fish, chicken, pork chops, whatever. I'm going to make a tarragon and shallot compound butter today. Those are two flavors that historically have always gone well with beef. Now, I really like fresh herbs. This is much better if you don't use dry herbs. But, you know, a lot of people go, well, I got to pick the herbs like this and all that. No, don't, don't bother doing that. Grab hold of it by the top and just kind of strip it down just like that. Then maybe pick the few at the top. It's really, really simple. Grab hold of it, just pull it down, and you've got leaves coming right off. And that's probably about enough for what we want to do. So over there in this bowl, I've got two sticks of unsalted butter that's way past room temperature. It's really, really soft. So let's just finely chop this tarragon. I wish you could smell this. It has that, I hate to say licorice smell, but it is a little bit of a licorice smell, but it's not a licorice taste. It's just, I don't know, it's, it's one of those herbs that when you taste it on food, you go, hmm, what, what, what is that? What is that that's making it taste so good? Because it really does enhance food. It's great on eggs. It mixes well with dill. I'm also going to take a little bit of Italian flat leaf parsley. And notice how I'm doing this. I'm just kind of making a ball with it and then just cutting right across it. Make a little ball again. So we've got our parsley into the bowl. Now I'm going to switch knives because I use, like to use a smaller knife when I'm finely mincing shallots. Shallot has kind of the taste between an onion and some garlic. It's probably an underused little thing. I like it because it gives it a brighter flavor, but it's not something that's really, really strong. So what I've done is I'm going across here kind of with the lines that God gave this thing, and then I'm just going to run my knife back this way, this way, and then go across. And that way I can finely mince the shallot because I don't want to get a really big piece of shallot in this butter. Pretty simple, huh? Tell you what, when you do things yourself from scratch, instead of using prepared products all the time, the flavors just jump. They come out in a big way, and you just can't duplicate this kind of flavor any other way. Put a little salt, put a little pepper, and then we're just going to mix it up. Now do you see why it's necessary to keep this stuff as soft as possible, the butter? Because you really are almost well, you are. You're whipping the butter. So now that we've got it mixed up, I'm going to take a blob of this and put it on our steaks. So right while the steaks are still warm, just flip as much as you want down on it and let that be melting and oozing into the steak. But you go, well, Fred, there's a lot of butter here. Yeah, there is a lot of butter here. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to take a piece of wax paper and we're going to roll the rest of this butter out on this wax paper. And we're going to kind of make a little bit of a log. Then we're going to take the wax paper and we're going to roll it. And then I usually take a wooden spatula and start tucking it in. Get the roll tight. Keep rolling it. And then we'll twist the ends. Find me a Ziploc bag. And then we'll throw this in the freezer. This will stay in the freezer for a good three, four, five months. So anytime you want some, you've already got it done. It'll be fine. I guarantee you the heat from the food will take care of it. Now, we come back, we're going to do one really odd salad. Stick with us. Join us in a few minutes. 